Hello and welcome to Let's Code and Indie Game episode 31. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to fix the code that positions our enemies when we create them, because at the moment they're stuck in the wall. I'll show you what I mean. So thanks to the changes we made last time, um, our enemies when we create them now appear in the wall down here, and this is because in the last episode one of the changes we made is to move how we switch between the screen X and Y positions and the game's uh, three dimensional positions. Uh, and one of the effects has been to move everything slightly forward, uh, including our enemies, so they're now kind of stuck down here. Uh, let's look at the actual code that causes that. So inside of our map class we have this create room function which is responsible for creating new rooms. And if we actually uh, look at the code here we can see the code that positions our slimes and it just takes a or generates a random x position and a random z position and then uses those positions to create some slimes. It throws those slimes into a table um, and then that table is passed into our room when we create it. Now I could just change these uh, numbers here so that they, um, they work better, uh, but instead it would make more sense if, and especially now that we have more than one room, it would make sense if we actually asked our tile map, uh, which was the main class we were working on in the last episode, we should just ask our tile map where the best place to put enemies, um, or yeah, ask our tile map for the best place to put enemies. and if that gives us all of the positions where enemies can go, we can then pick the positions we want and place our enemies there, and they will no longer appear in the wall. Um, so in order to do that, we need to, when we create our slimes, we need to have access to our tile map. Um, and at the moment, we only use our tile map at the bottom of this function. So the first thing we need to do is decide which tile map we're using right at the start of creating a room. Um, but in order to do that, we need to choose a, uh, a random tile map because we want to pick between bridge room or dungeon room, which are the two floor plans we have in our game. Let's take a look at those very quickly. Uh, bridge, where are we? Floor plan. Um, here is our bridge floor plan. You see it kind of looks like our bridge level. And here is our dungeon floor plan, you can see it kind of looks like our dungeon level. And we just import these at the top of map, or we require them at the top of map, so we have them here. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a utility function for picking a, picking a random item out of a list, or out of a table. So if I start off by um, sticking both our dungeon room and our bridge room into a into a table called tile maps dungeon room bridge room i can now when i create a room say local tile map equals random dot pick um, tile maps and the idea is that random dot pick will pick one of the items from my list at random uh, so let's actually create that function, and I'm going to create it inside of math. So we'll go over to our math folder, make a new file, and call it random.lua. And we'll just make a table to hold our random functions, and return, oops, return random. And because this isn't a class, we'll just, um, we won't use a create method or anything, we'll just add things straight to our random um, random table here. So random pick is a function, it takes a list or a table which is acting as a list, and we want it to return a random, um, a random entry from that list. So first of all we need to know how long our list is, so we can say local length equals uh, the length operator, uh, this symbol on our list, and then we can just do love.math.random because uh, love2d has its own random function and this function if you give it uh, two numbers it will give you back a random number including those two numbers or in the range of those two numbers so if length was 10 it would give me a number between 1 and 10 including 1 and 10 um, so we can say local um, I don't know choice 
equals love.math.random, then we just return list choice. And uh, this is pretty trivial when operating on a list of two things, but when we have um, much bigger lists of things we want to choose from, this is just a pretty uh, easy way of getting a random pick from a list. So let's pull in pull in that function. So random equals require source math random. And then this should work. We now have a tile map. So we can rewrite the end of our function to just return. We can get rid of this uh, piece of randomness here. And instead just return whichever tile map uh, we picked at the top of the function. Cool. So why did we do that? Uh, we did that so that we have access to the tile map up here and we can start to use the tile map to decide where um, where our slimes should be positioned. So let's actually see if that works before we make any more changes. Because um, you know we want to make lots of small changes uh, rather than big ones because then we can check that our changes haven't broken anything. So I'll keep going until I hopefully get the bridge level because that will show that everything still works. We have a 50-50 chance, so I'm starting to wonder if this does actually... Uh... Ah, there we go. Good, so that seems to still be working. Okay, let's look at our tile map. So our tile map has access to all of the um, letters in, our, uh, in the giant string, which makes up our level. And we already know how to loop through that string letter by letter and then make a decision based on the letter. And if we look at room.lua as well, we already have a function which tells us um, if a given tile um, based on an xz position is walkable or not. Uh, so if we sort of use the techniques from these two functions, we should be able to write a function which gives us all of the all of the positions of the walkable tiles. And from those positions, we can choose where we want to put our slimes, and that way we know that our slimes are always being put in walkable locations. So let's make a function. Um, get walkable um, positions. Positions. Uh, we know it will be an instance function, so we can pass in self. And we will also need the tile size, and we'll probably need a few more things, but um, I definitely know we'll need tile size, because tile size comes from our uh, tile sheet, not from our tile map, because the tile sheet is what deals with the uh, tile graphics, so it makes sense for the tile sheet to know how wide things are. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move on. So, first of all, we need a table to store all of the walkable uh, positions. And now we just need to fill that table with a tile if it is walkable. So let's start by looping through all of our tiles. So we'll say i equals 1 to uh, the length of self.map. Oops, sorry, we want this should be a for loop. 4 i equals 1 to i equals uh, the length of map. Do something. And that something is, first of all, let's grab the character. Um, so character equals self.map sub because it's a string and we can use i now to grab the uh, the letter in the ith position and now we want to say if um, that character is walkable then we want to add it to the add to walkable positions so let's make a walkable function and the reason I'm doing this in a new function rather than in line is just because it makes our code look a bit neater. So let's say walkable equals function end, and we know that this takes a character. And I'm starting it with an underscore just to remind myself that it is private. So um, 
The idea is we're not going to attach this function to the instance of the class, so the only place you can use it is inside of the tile map module, and that just uh, keeps our code neater. We only want to expose functions we know are definitely going to get used. So if we take a quick look at room, we can see that walkable tiles are the, uh, the comma, the full stop, and the uh, little tilde symbol thingy. Um, so let's rewrite that. Now eventually we should uh, definitely rewrite our tiles to be classes rather than um, rather than characters, but until then um, I think we can go a few more episodes without doing that, so that's what we'll do. Um, so we want to return character equals full stop, or character equals comma, or character equals that one. Good, so now walkable should work. Okay, so now we just need the x and y position. Um, so local x, and we actually get our x and y positions down here. So um, I'm pretty much just going to copy what I've already done, but I'll talk through it because we did that a couple of episodes ago. So we do i minus 1, because uh, although indexes start at 1 in Lua, it's much uh, more helpful here if they start at 0, um, because then our zero f our first tile starts uh, right up left against the screen, rather than over by, um, by 1. Um, so we do i minus 1, then we mod that by the number of tiles, self.tiles wide. Uh, and what this does is it just divides um, divides this number and returns the remainder. Then we times this by the tile size, which we just passed in as an argument to this function. Uh, for the y position, we still do i minus one. All right, we actually do math dot floor of i minus one. probably don't need these brackets, math.floor of i minus 1 divided by self.tiles wide, but I'll just double check, yep. So uh, math.floor will divide these two numbers together and then give me the lowest or round that down to the closest integer. Um, and then times tile size again. So timesing it by tile size will give me the position um, in terms of the actual screen coordinates rather than um, in terms of the, the character in the string coordinates. Uh, so now we have local x and y, and because um, we know that x and y are the locations of a walkable tile, we want to actually do a table.insert into walkable positions, um, and we'll add a small table with x and y as values. Then at the end of this function, we just want to return walkable positions. So this function should now give us every single position of a walkable tile in our room. So now if we go back to map, um, because we have a tile map, we can actually use that in here. So we can say in fact, it would make more sense to do it up here, so we can say uh, available positions equals tile map, uh, get walkable positions, and we know that we need to pass in, um, what do we need to pass in for this? Just self and the tile size. Now we know our tile size is 8, but we should really get this value to get this value from the tile sheet. So we'll come back and do that in a moment. Uh, because we don't want numbers uh, floating around in midair, and we also need to get walkable positions, add this to the add get walkable positions to the instance of our tile map. So we'll say instance get walkable positions equals get walkable positions, and this will let us call that function from other places in our code because it's now uh, publicly available on the instance of our tile map. So now inside of map this should work. Um, this will give us all of the available positions and we can use our new random.pick function to get the actual position. 
So let's just say local pos equals random pick of available positions. Um, and now we need to use those positions, the available positions, to create a an entity position. Uh, and because of the changes we made last time, um, it's actually pretty easy to do because we know that the x value will be the first entrance in the table we get back. Um, y will be 0, um, assuming our entity starts on the floor, and so the rest of the value must be z. Uh, and this goes x, y, z. Let's, let's see if that works. Aha! So now our slimes appear only on walkable tiles. Uh, let's uh, try another room. Great. So one disadvantage of this is because our slimes appear randomly, they can appear really close to the player. And that's just not really fair because if a slime spawns on top of you, you get hit straight away. So we can actually improve this so we've got a bit more control over where um, over where our slimes spawn. So let's go back to our tile map. Go back to get walkable positions and we're going to add in two more values. Here we'll add an x start and an x end. And we'll use these values to limit where on the x-axis of the room we want to get walkable positions for. So what we need to do is move the code that gets our x position out of this if statement. And then we can say if the tile is walkable and um, x is greater than x start and x is less than x end. Um, let's do greater than or equal to x start and less than x end. Then um, we go ahead and run the rest of the code. And so now inside of map.lua I should be able to add two more arguments here. And we'll say 290 and 300, and let's see if this works. There we go. Now our slimes can only appear at the very end of the room. And um, obviously we'll tweak these values uh, to get them right eventually, but what this does is it just gives us that extra, that extra bit of control over our slimes and stops them from immediately um, appearing on top of the player. And this is quite nice because now as you enter a room, all of the enemies sort of run towards you from the opposite side of the screen. And it just feels, feels pretty good. Cool. So let's just tidy up this piece of code here. So we want to get hold of the, um, the tile sheet so we can work out the tile size. So if we look in room.lua, Uh, where are we? In room.create, I'll just do a control F for create. In room.create, we currently hard code the tile sheet uh, because we only have one tile sheet, but it would be nicer if we passed that in as an argument. So um, let's pass in tile sheet. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, let's pass in tile sheet as the second argument, and then we can say tile sheet equals tile sheet just going to be lazy and uh, steal that piece of code before I uh, say tile sheet equals tile sheet. Now let's go back to map, um, create room, and we'll just pull out the tile sheet as well. Tile sheet equals tile sheet dot create, which means we need to require our tile sheet at the top. Oops, where have I gone? Here we go. Equals require source graphics tile sheet. And then instead of eight here, I should be able to use ah, I can't call this tile sheet because that's what the module is called, so let's just call this 
um, tiles, I guess. And we can say tiles dot tile size. And this means inside of room, we actually no longer need, I don't think we need tile sheet anymore. So let's try getting rid of it. Let's see what this does. Ooh, attempt to perform arithmetic on field tile size, a nil value. Okay. Where's that coming from? In create room. So first of all, let's check that um, it is actually called tile size. Yep, instance dot tile size equals tile size. Where are we? Create room tiles dot tile size. Tile sheet dot create. Oh, it would make sense if we passed in our tile sheet as well. That's hopefully what's wrong. So I'll just uh, make the code a bit neater and then actually let's do that. We no longer need uh, this reminder. And when we create our room, which is gone too far, when we create our room we do need to pass those in as well. Aha! Yep, that was what was wrong. We were just, uh, or I say we, I, um, I'm the one writing the code. I was just uh, forgetting to pass in the tile sheet value to our room. Cool. There we have it. Things are getting a bit neater. And I think in the next episode, we'll either look at items and inventory, or we will look at starting an encounter system so we can actually fight multiple waves of enemies and have a bit more control um, over what's going on. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. A quick reminder that all of the code is available. There's a link in the description for the video and you can go to GitHub and get the code and have a try for yourself. If you do have a few seconds, feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.